Yeah, yeah press that. Yeah, it's okay, no problem. <laughs> So, uh, when you key the word projectile inside the tracker shared library interface, you should come across certain videos uh, and resources that could be useful in this lesson. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the video that I want to talk about. Um, okay. So, I, I want you to do this instead. Can you go to collection again? Can you navigate to uh, kinematics in the folder TRZ. Navigate down. Okay, I want to use an example. I, I had some thoughts about this. I want to use an example of your senior last year. Okay, her name is Victoria. I think. Okay, so she flamed. She flamed something which I thought was quite interesting. So you know, like all educational classroom learning exercises, I want to make it real to you. So there's no, there's little point for me to talk about a professor's video, then you don't quite believe, but this is actually a work done by your senior. So I think that will be quite effective in driving away, driving across a point that this is real. Okay? So could you click on the video, okay, click on the video, zoom to fit. Okay, zoom to fit, does it work? Okay, so while we are tackling the technical issues, can you just briefly just navigate through the various tabs and get a sense of the activity they are going to do later, okay? So today's lesson will be on the mass A, followed by the model B, and then ending off with model A, okay? So then that will be the one hour. It, it, is, it sounds very little, okay, but there's a lot of things to cover. Okay. Okay, you can, you can, okay. Uh, okay, I have a solution. Okay, uh, listen up, you have a solution. Okay, you get, you can, some of you seem to be able to get into the internet. Okay, good. Go to Amodo, I left a link there. Can you download the, the TRZ file from there? That will solve the, the, the library problem, okay? Then there was one particular uh, incident here. Okay, you need to be at least 4.8 and higher to run the lesson today because the, the files are in TRZ format which the professor have made readable using 4.8 and higher. So if you use the latest which is 4.87, you are fine. If you use 4.4, 4.7, you have problem opening up. This is why some of you try to click on the resource and you can't launch it. Okay, so you need to refresh your, you need to update the tracker software. Okay, so if you're at, at Modo, yes, okay. So today's lesson flow is like this. We will look at the, the student's work, uh, Victoria's work on the projectile motion. Okay, she, I think, attached a, a fork or a spoon, then she released it. So there's the elastic band that forces the projectile outwards. Okay, we're gonna the motion has already been tracked. Oh good. The motion has already been tracked. Okay. So today, uh, rightfully pointed, yes, we're gonna do the modeling aspect of it. Okay? Because there's a lot of rich learning that can happen. Okay? Okay, so uh, I have to move on a little bit. So those of you who are still having problems, can you please raise up your hand uh, so that your teacher can come and uh, address a problem that you're facing. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with the lesson now. Okay. Now, in this particular lesson, uh, in this particular video, I would like you to scroll. Have you used, have you used tracker? Yes. Have, uh? Okay, so I do not need to... If, if I'm not clear, uh, the English phrase are there. Uh? Okay, now, you can actually click on the play button. Okay. And you can see that the projectile motion is indeed being tracked. Okay? You do not need to track it. Okay? But in your own PT, you need to do your own tracking. Okay? But for the purpose of the lesson, I will do the modeling part. Okay? Now there's a cool feature here which is called loop. You may want to click on it. Okay? And then the next time that you click on it, okay, it will just loop the video. Okay? So this is very useful when you're doing presentation. And then you, you want to wow your audience, your fellow students, what you're doing, okay? So you just keep looping. 
to show very vividly what is being shown. Okay? Okay, now. How many of you all know what this purple axis mean? The graph axis. Ah, the graph axis. The origin okay. is like the position of Okay, excellent. Okay, so the origin is where you decide as a scientist or as a student scientist where you want the origin to be. Okay, so I left it there. Okay, you don't have to touch it. Okay, but in case you want to do it, you can change it. The other thing you notice is um, there is a... What does this look like to you? A scale. Okay, so I think the student use a, a shorter ruler. It's only half a meter. So likewise, you can see that I actually calibrated the length, that means the number of pixels in the video of this particular length to be half a meter, okay? 0 0.5 meters. Okay? So this is the standard things that you must do, okay? followed by the tracking. Okay? Can somebody just briefly explain how do you track the motion? You must press what? Press shift and then click, click, click. Okay, good. Okay. That's why we're here today. Okay. okay, good. Now, okay. Now I want you to do this. Okay, because this is a modeling lesson, I want you to do. Uh, so we have done all these things here. Okay, we are not going to change the clip position. Okay, so this is the clip setting if you want to change. Okay, where does it start and where does it end? Okay, you don't have to fiddle with this. Okay, this is the calibration stick. And this is the measurement according to the system in Cartesian. And I want you to now click on create, select dynamic particle, followed by Cartesian. Okay? Now, upon selecting this option, Tracker launches a new interface. It's a pop up of which then you can key in certain variables. Okay, certain states uh, for it to understand what you're trying to model. Okay, so if you click play, okay, click play, you will notice that the actual motion is very nicely curved, but the model doesn't move. Okay, if this is not clear, uh, I would like you to do this. Okay, can you come here, change the color? I typically use green because green is that means it's correct. Then red, because default tracker chooses red. So this will be very clear to anybody that the motion and the model are not uh, well represented. The model doesn't represent the motion well. Okay. So now, because we have gone through some form of projectile motion, can you suggest some things to add? What are the things that we typically want to add in a model if this is a projectile motion? Someone from uh, this side of the classroom? Gravitational Okay, gravitational acceleration. Okay. Now, remember yesterday, that time when I came, Mr. Leong sat there and then he was like going on about, you know, Mr. Wee, you should do evidence based. You should just show the student. Okay, today we will do it. Okay. So now you need to do this. Huh? Can you just pause the video in case it overloads your machine? <laughs> uh, come here. Okay, click play. Okay, there's a screen here. Okay. Make sure you are not in a model, you go to your mass A again. Okay? And because, okay, at the back of your mind, you must be wondering what are the things that can allow me to measure acceleration. Okay? One easy way is, okay, what, what? Okay, simply put, okay, are you familiar with averages? Average? Yes. Okay, so we will look at the acceleration in the y direction and we find the average. I think that's the simplest. Okay? Then if you happen to notice certain uh, quirkiness of the data, then you can actually probe and then I can propose better ways to determine the value of g. Okay? So can you come here, scroll down, okay? uh, there's a value for ay, right click, okay? analyze. Have you seen all this before? Yes. Okay, good. So analyze, okay? Now it shows the, the data with time and the variable ay. Ay represents acceleration in the y direction. And you will notice that the data doesn't look quite nice. Okay? It's because 
of the uncertainty involved, okay? So if you look at the, to make sense of the video, okay, we have to come back to the video. Okay, you look at the motion, so it starts around frame 1, okay, 10, okay, so we'll go back to the analysis. Uh, oh, it's at the back, huh? okay, so I will double click it or plus it, okay. So I need to, okay, so tracker has a funny characteristics, okay. So in a nutshell, this, this is all the things I can use to determine G, okay, but not this, because this doesn't make sense. Agree? Okay. So we will select, okay, use your mouse, okay, select a region, okay, by clicking and holding on to the mouse, okay, select the region. So roughly here, I'm not I'm gonna exclude this because this looks like an anonymous point, okay, which you are so familiar with in your normal uh, activity in sciences. Okay, now can you come to this thing called measure? Oh sorry, analyze statistics. Okay, there should be something called mean. Okay, this is the thing they were looking for. Okay, so it is not terribly good looking. Okay, it's negative 9.24. Okay, plus minus a bit. Okay, yes. What's the E0, E1? What does that mean? Okay, what does the E1, E minus 1, and E0 mean? Okay, sometimes in scientific notation, you come across this thing called the magnitude of powers. Uh, that means like certain things are very big, so it's to the power of 24, to the power of 16, you know? And things are very small to the power of minus 9. So in tractor, it's, it's not easy to represent all this, so they use a scientific notation. So in simply put, the E, say simply put, uh, E01 is the same as your Whatever number you have, multiply 10 to the power of uh, 0, 1, which is 1. Okay? So, e to the power of e, 0, 1 means times 10. Okay. okay? Also, e to the power of 0 is 1. Yes. If, if it is e to the power of 0, it will not show with the e. It will be e to the power of uh, 0, which is multiplied by the same number. So, it has no effect. Then, obviously, e minus 0, 1 means you must multiply by 10 minus 1. So it adds the decimal place uh, to the number, okay? So very quickly, this is actually 0 0.27, okay? Okay, so are you okay with this number, negative 9.24? Okay, so in, in science education, uh, a lot of us like to say, okay, student must, you know, in your spa activities, student must take three readings, right? Okay, so in tracker, you can take something like three readings, but you can use different methods to determine. Oh, you went to sleep. Okay, so now, you are familiar that um, from the gradient of your velocity, Time graph, you can determine A from the gradient. Okay, so we are going to do that later. Okay, if you have, if you are ahead of me, please go ahead and do a right click on the velocity versus time graph in the y direction. Okay. Okay, so I want you to remember this number. Okay. Negative 9.24. This is the value that we got for AY. Okay, which is actually your uh, typically you like to call it G. Okay, most of us like to call it G. Okay, this is from this particular method. Okay, now the next thing you need to do is this. Come to this graph, do a right click, because this is the velocity in the y direction, do a right click, analyze. Okay. Now this is where start things start to become complicated because tracker thinks that you are you know what you're doing. Okay, so if you know what you're doing, you actually have many data you want to analyze. Okay, but because you may be only interested in one set, so I would like you to uncheck this, uncheck this and only keep the VY. Okay? Uncheck this to and it will not show the markers. 
and this will not show the line. And the tractor automatically now understands that you are only interested in this uh, BY. Okay? And in this particular shape, okay, you should be able to determine, like what we said just now, the gradient. Okay, because the gradient. Yeah, and then I just do a bit slower because the gradient of this is actually your A in the Y direction. Okay, dVy over dt is your AY. Yeah. So there are many ways you can do this, of which um, the cleverest way is to do a curve fit. Okay, select curve fit. And you can now select the region of the graph that looks to be pretty linear and then release it. Okay, you can look at the selection of the points here and you can now see that this, this model now, until this uh, equation fit is actually dy equals to capital A times T plus B. So capital A is significant. Yeah, it is your gradient. Okay, and the gradient, because of your physics knowledge, is A1. Okay? So another way to triangulate this is now you found another value. 9.3, let's say, uh, if you take Yes, yes. If you want to select another point, extra point is fine. Okay? Let me try to do that. Uh, so, there is another technique, okay, usually you select from the region here, you know, you get some point, then you want to fine tune, you find you can't. So, with the clever use of your table here, okay, you can click, hold and drag, and that will select the region of the data set that you're interested in very nicely. You can even use shift to exclude certain points, uh, oh, sorry, control, I think, for Apple, I think, for mine, okay. So you can now select very intelligently only the data set that you think makes sense. Okay, and then you get another value of uh, A. Okay? So let's, let's, let's pretend that this still is valid. Lah. Okay, if you don't want to pretend, then it will be 2 2. Okay? Okay? So you found A. So now that Mr. Wee talks so much, huh? end of the day, I just want you to find out that what Mr. Leong said, I'm doing it now. Evidence-based modeling. Take the numbers from the analysis, put it into the model, okay? So come back here, okay? In the model building, just remember we were doing model A, okay? Not, not the two model answer that I have built, but the model that we are doing brand new today. Okay? So come here, select model builder. Okay? And key in key where? FY, yeah? Okay? FY. So uh, typically students will say 9.24. Okay? So if you want to take the average of it, 9.23, okay? <coughs> and you can see now. Okay, very vividly, okay, what this model does, okay, can somebody just quickly shout out, what do you think the blue ball is doing, the blue model, oh, sorry, the green model? It's showing like the Y direction. Yeah. Okay, so it's showing the Y direction, it's moving up. So then now the thing is this, what's wrong? Yeah. Shouldn't it be? Shouldn't it be have a minus sign, right? Okay. So I wanted to make this deliberate mistake because only by making mistake can you learn. So now you don't have to tell you don't have to tell your friends in school that oh you know you must remember to put a minus sign because evidently from the Cartesian coordinate system adopted you definitely need a negative sign to represent something that's going no. down. Okay? That has a negative uh, value to the y. So now I'll come back to the model. I'm going to input negative sign. It goes downwards. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's the whole purpose of all this modeling, okay? Because we want to use the evidence and we want to show what's wrong and then 
slowly build it up, which is actually the nature of um, knowledge. Knowledge is not suddenly somebody give birth and then all of us take it as real. Somebody had to go through all the hard work, okay, and which is what we are trying to get you to do. Okay? So now you notice that this is actually the model. Something is still not quite right. Okay? So what can you propose as a thinking, intelligent human being? What can you propose to add to the model, to make it correct? Initial velocities, okay? So I think you get the hang of it already, huh? So I'm going to go a bit faster in order not to sound too uh, old. Okay, so what I need to do now is I'm going to go back to this. Okay, I need initial velocity. Okay, so there are many ways uh, I can come here. I select uh, VY. Okay, I'm going to select right click. I'm trying to determine Vx first. Okay, then follow I determine Vy. Because physics talks about vectors. So this is a vector quantity. So it has two directions. Okay? So I need to determine uh, Vx first. Okay, so I'm going to right click analyze. Okay, again. I'm going to uncheck these two. Okay, I'm going to select a region of the data. Okay and find that the value the value here is of oh, sorry let me turn to a okay, this value here is of meaning to, to us okay would somebody like to tell us uh, what what does this meaning what is the meaning of this why intercept okay can okay so um, I am quite comfortable to accept that the y-intercept of this particular is actually the initial velocity. Okay, I'm trying to say that here, instead of here, is the starting speed. Okay, so it's roughly, so you can see this time now we are not using the gradient. It's all very intelligent. You've got to do the thinking. Okay, so you've got to use this number. So I'm going to select this, Control c and then paste, okay? Control C or Apple uh, Control okay, then. then I'm going to paste it in the model. Uh, I'll paste it here. Okay, and automatically tracker now recognizes it as 0 0.76709. And let's look at the model. And uh, and the actual motion. So it is getting there, you know, it's getting there, okay? So the next thing I, like, I would like you to do is, because I'm explaining too much, I worry you don't understand. So I'm going to take one quick walk, okay? So you, you have a question to ask me, please do. Now I want you to use the same technique that I've gone through. It's repetitive now. Okay, now that you know the steps, you can do it yourself. Okay, select VY, analyze, look at evidences, come up with a clever way to determine velocity in the y direction initially then plug it into the model okay, and see what you get okay, there are no right answers it's only getting better and better but there are no right answers